Really good to have you with us. And we start with what's becoming a really familiar tale, the continuing pressure on commodity prices. Good news, of course, if you're having to pay for them. Bad news, though, if your economy or company relies on the income. So oil is still hovering around 11-year lows, just off those lows we saw in the last 24 hours, in fact. But if you look, about, if you look at the year, we're down by a third. Oil production is running close to record record highs. There's just not enough demand to mop it all up. But that's not the only commodity under pressure, of course. Slower growth in China, the world's second biggest economy, means the country is now using less copper, and that's helped to push down copper prices by around a quarter this year. Then, it's a similar story for iron ore. Weaker industrial production in China has helped depress the price of iron ore, which has fallen by around 45%. And gold hasn't escaped either. Its price is down by around 10% uh, this year. This time it's the strong US dollar partly to blame. Gold's priced in dollars of course so the stronger the greenback the less attractive gold becomes. And with interest rates rising in the US investors may be drawn to investments on the other side of the Atlantic where returns are more attractive. Shares for example in US companies. Another reason to pull out of these commodities. Ben. Sal, thanks very much. Well, Amrita Sen is with me. She's Chief Oil Analyst at Energy Aspects. Uh, welcome to the programme. Um, Sally running through the numbers there, and if you look at Brent, just as one example, down, what, 42% lower than this time last year. Um, it's really hard, isn't it, to judge who this is good for and who this is bad for. Initially, <laughs> of course, it's, it's drivers that are doing very well out of this, um, but less so for the oil firms themselves. And we've seen the big response from them is laying off staff and cutting investment. Mm -hmm. That's going to continue, isn't it? Oh, for sure. I mean, we've seen oil majors, uh, NOCs, and particularly the U.S. shale companies uh, cut huge amounts of workforce and capital expenditure. Our preliminary estimates down about $110 billion this year, another $100 billion next year. If these prices persist for another few months, I reckon that could go up another 20%. We've talked a lot about the U.S. shale producers and whether this is all actually just the OPEC members mm -hmm. trying to put them out of business. But we've seen they've managed to withstand this storm a little better than many had expected. I mean, I suppose the question is how long this can go on before someone's got to blink. I think that's exactly the question. I think it's fair to say $30 oil, the industry is just not sustainable. Uh, however, it is very much a survival game at the moment. Everybody, I mean, the amount of asset sales that you've seen in the U.S., it had, it's at record levels. Moody's has placed another 29 companies on review for further downgrades. Big companies, the, these include uh, the likes of some of the biggest guys in the shale and in the upstream business in the U.S., but literally they're selling every asset possible to survive in the hope prices will go up and then they will survive. But the hedges are running out. They had hedged at high oil prices. Now it's not there anymore. So looking in your crystal ball, Amrita, <laughs> what are we talking about in 2016, do you think? Uh, first off will be a struggle and I think the warm winter just isn't helping. It's been very warm here in the US, in, in Japan and Korea. Uh, but second half, because of the cutbacks that you were talking about as well, they should start feeding through to lower production, but probably till not until Q4-16 really. And the big question, the big Shell BG merger, um, we've got Shell in the image there, uh, mm -hmm. that's very much, uh, not necessarily in doubt, but very much in the spotlight, mm -hmm. because that was predicated on a price of what, about $67 a barrel? Or $70, close yeah. to $70 per barrel. Um, I think it is fair to say that prices will go back up. If anything, the lower the prices stay today, the higher they will be in a couple of years' time. So I don't think there's anything wrong with that price. Is The question is, how long do we stay in this low price environment? And that's probably adding to the jitters of a lot of investment. Out there. Mm. One will be watching well into the new year. But uh, for now, thank you. I'm Rita Sen there from Energy Aspect.